Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this free fall question, they tell us that Spud Webb was five, eight inches tall, that he was really short, but he could jump really high 1.1 meters off the ground for his vertical jump. So he's able to dunk the basketball still. And so they want us to figure out with that kind of a vertical height, how long was he in the air for? And they specify that it's the time from when he jumps to when he lands on the ground again. To illustrate the picture, what's happening is he's jumping up. And then he's coming back down, of course, which is what happens when you jump. And we're going to be looking at it half at a time. We don't know what his initial velocity is. So we're going to look at the second half of the problem where right here, his initial velocity is zero because he's just sitting in the air for a split second before he starts to fall back down to the earth. And the final velocity, we don't know it, but we won't need it as you'll see later on. So let's write a list of the variables that were given. We know, as we just talked about, that the initial velocity from where we're going to be looking at it is zero meters per second. The delta y, or let's break it up so we'll say right here is also the y initial and down here is the y final. So y initial is going to be 1.1 meters because he's at the top of his jump. y final is going to be zero meters because we're saying the floor is y equals zero. The acceleration, since we're dealing with free fall, is gravity, which is negative g or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we need to find out what the time is. So that'll have a question mark. Okay, so we need to find an equation that has all of these variables in it without any variables that we don't know. So it can't have the V final because we're not sure what that is. So the one that we'll be using is Y final is equal to Y initial plus velocity initial times time plus one half times the acceleration times the time squared. We can go through and simplify this though, because as we talked about the y final is zero, so that will go away. And we also said that the initial velocity is also zero, so that can also go away. So now when we write it, the simplified version, we have zero is equal to y initial plus one half times the acceleration times the time squared. So let's move the y initial over so now we'll have negative y initial is equal to one half times the acceleration times time squared. And so now let's divide over to isolate t, let's divide over one half and the acceleration. But if you think about dividing by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So by me dividing by one half is the same, one half a is the same as multiplying by two. So when we come up here, that will give us then two times the negative y initial divided by acceleration is equal to t squared. For simplicity, we could also write it negative two y initial. Since we only have one negative, it doesn't matter which one is negative because the whole value here will end up negative in the end. We want to take the square root of both sides. So t is equal to the square root of two times negative y initial divided by the acceleration. And so we have, let's come up here to the top to give us some more space. So t is equal to the square root of two times the negative y initial, which we said was 1.1 meters, divided by the acceleration, which we said is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And let's plug that in. So we have two times negative 1.1 meters divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which gives us a hang time of 0.47 seconds. But hold on, before you plug that in, you'll get the wrong answer. Because if you remember, we are only looking at half of his jump, but they tell us they want us to know whenever he leaves the ground to touching the ground again. So we need to multiply this by two which will give us a time for that he's the total time that he's in the air of 0.95 seconds.